So this is the starting point for any Gateson model. You want a 3D model of your organism in some sort of a CAD program. So here I have a chimpanzee in Blender. And you can see that what we've got is um, from a CT scan. So we've got the skin outline of the animal. And we can also turn off the various bits of skin. And you can see, once I get there, that we also have the bones underlying the model. Now the reason you want both the bones and the skin ideally is that you can use the skin for generating what are called the mass properties of each of the segments. But if you're just creating a model to move around you might not need that or you might be able to get the information from somewhere else. So a skeleton is probably the, the minimum requirement. Obviously the skeleton can come from a CT, it can come from um, laser scanning or photogrammetry, but you can also sculpt it. There's no reason why this animal has to be a, a real organism. It can be something that you've created or it can be something that you've sculpted directly from pictures. So here we have the, the uh, model in Blender and what we need to do for, to get it working with GateSim is we have to get the individual um, segments as um, OBJ or ply files. Now, a couple of things you need to notice. Firstly is the way it's oriented. Um, the blue axis is Z, the uh, X axis is red. So it's facing in the X direction and vertical is X, which means that the Y direction is left and right. Now, Gateson doesn't really care which axes you choose, um, but this is what I generally use and has been tested. So if you pick a different axis system, I think it will work, um, but you might be heading to a world of pain. And so you might want to certainly start off using the Axis system that I prefer. But there's nothing in the actual software that should stop it functioning if you have a particularly strong preference for different sets of axes. Uh, other things to, to note is that um, I tend to use uh, SI units for everything. So all my measurements of length are in meters, all my measurements of mass are in kilograms, all my measurements of force are in newtons. Again, there's absolutely nothing in the software that stops you using millimeters and millinewtons and grams. All you have to make sure is that F equals MA works for the units that you've chosen. And to be honest, that's a huge amount of work. It's much, much simpler just to put everything into kilograms, meters, and newtons, and then it will all behave as you expect. The only time then you might have to change that is if you're dealing with something very small or very large. I did a spider simulation and it had to be done in millimeters because otherwise we just got rounding errors because some of the values became too small. Okay, so here's our, our model as, as we want it. Um, you can see it from um, different directions. So you can see it's a, a nice complete model. Uh, let's work on this direction. What we need to do is we need to convert this into individual OBJ files. So what I've actually done is I've actually selected um, areas of the body already, but you can do it with, um, with Blender. You can select a particular location. So here we have the, the right forearm. And then if we go into export and we can do export wavefront OBJ. This will pop up a, a dialog box and there's some settings that we need to adjust in this. So we want only a selection otherwise we'll just get everything and this, the individual segments of the body need to be different. It doesn't really matter what you select here it all gets ignored. When Blender exports OBJ files, it fiddles with the axes. So the axes that you have in Blender will not be the axes that you have in the OBJ file. To fix this, uh, if you set um, Y as forward and Z up, then suddenly it'll behave itself. Uh, don't ask me why. Uh, and here, um, at the moment, probably best not to include UVs. Um, they can cause a few issues with the import and there's nothing in um, Gateson that uses UVs anyway so you probably don't want them. Uh, normals are used, they're not required because they'll be calculated from the triangles otherwise. Um, again, Gateson really only likes triangular faces so it's sensible to switch that on. Uh, possibly your model is triangular already uh, but it doesn't slow things down very much. Um, and 
then you just export it as, as a name file. Click on the button, wait a little bit of time. Because these are from CT, they're quite high triangle count uh, and they take a little bit of time to export. But that's basically it. You then go through all the different segments that you're interested in and you export them one at a time, giving them sensible different names. Uh, it makes sense to call the left-hand side left and it makes sense to call the right-hand side right and it makes sense to have a pattern because it means that your file format um, is sensible at the end of the day. But as you can see, yeah, once you've got the model in something like Blender, uh, it's very straightforward. As I say, you do this for the bones, uh, you also do this for the skin segments if, if that's what you've got as well. So we could turn those on, we can select them individually, and we can export them in exactly the same way.